This is Crane Durham's Nothing But Truth. Welcome back. Yes, One News Now, OneNewsNow.com. Charlie Butch, Chad Groening, Jody Brown. They do a great job and a trusted source for each and every one of you locking into AFR Talk. It's a family. Now, before the break, I was speaking to the issue of President Obama, the economic speech, which he pretty much detailed what he had talked about before. I mean, there were really no surprises. And what gets me about this is that President Obama goes around and continues to say the same things over and over again. Oh, you think he's tweaking some things? Is that it? Tweaking something? Okay, well, here here's the basics. One, it's all about the middle class and those of us trying to get into the middle class. It's all about that. Those of us in the middle class and those of us trying to get into the middle class. And for our growth to take place, we need the rich to do their fair share, which is invest in the country, meaning through tax dollars, for education and research, as well as improvements in infrastructure and transportation and regulation, more regulation, even expanding to the Internet. It's been an absolute disaster when you look at the results. And why has it been a disaster? Well, Captain Obvious, it's been a disaster because as we look at education funding, we pour more money in. What happens? It drives up the cost of education overall because it is acknowledged and schools know, oh, government is funding. It drives up the cost. They'll ask more and go to more of a threshold. Plus, if you look at or increase the threshold of which people will pay. You look at college loans and the ability to pay those back. They're not done in a market way. They need market reform, and the government needs to get out of the way of that, in which where where people can declare bankruptcy to shed those. But the other part to that is that the bank can make an evaluation on grades and references, a whole host of things before giving money to the students. And this has all been about changing the rates and, in essence, distorting the market. That's what this is. Why don't we just make this really big, okay? Let's just say, look at the areas where government is. And this is not because it's not about compassion. Let's not get stuck on silly. Look at what the government has done to health care. Look at what it's done to education. It's failed. You want to talk about K through 12? You want to talk about Head Start and more investment into that after their own government survey says after third grade, no impact between those that were in the program and out of the program? I mean, but we're going to keep hearing about it. The investments, the investments into green technology, wind and solar and payoffs to 80% of the loans going to donors and solyndras. And that's what we want to come back to because government, he believes that there needs to be a partnership five-year plan and that needs to take place in government to partner with business because that's how you build a long, sustaining economy that works for everybody. Somehow, freedom is unfair. Well, using people's gifts, God-given, are going to have different results. And people are either going to succeed in the sense of achieving their financial goal or or being able to have a successful business that involves using their gifts to the betterment of society where they're appreciated and they've done it in a way where they provide the service or good to the consumer that benefits from it. And their competition has been eclipsed by them, not through government regulation, but rather through the betterment of their service. This is what it's about. I don't think uh, life is fair. It's not meant to be fair. 
I don't think government can make it fair. I think government, if you want to talk about minis- the Minister of Fairness, President Obama, in essence, is unfair, ironically. Because what happens? You go to the government, carves out a special market, and they distort the market. Remember, they have unlimited resources and unlimited power, and that's why our, feder- uh, our founders were so concerned about what they would do and the power of the federal government and limiting the power of the federal government, recognizing that it's made up of men, fallen nature. Okay, you get it. President Obama yesterday selling his new economic agenda, so-called. Roll it. We heard back then is what we're hearing now, the same arguments against change, the same fear and misinformation that opponents use are the ones opponents are spreading now. This won't work. It'll destroy the health system. We have to slow down. We have to wait, they said. But history shows that upholding our founding principles demands continuous work toward a more perfect union. Some ideas will benefit folks right away. Some will take years to fully implement. But the key is to break through the tendency in Washington to just bounce from crisis to crisis. What we need is not a three-month plan or even a three-year plan. We need a long-term American strategy based on steady, persistent effort to reverse the forces that have conspired against the middle class for decades. That has to be our project. So conspired against the forces conspired against us to provide it, and the way the government has been working, you look at them as the protector. That's how he's selling it. Unfortunately, they are he's putting in place the power and the forces that work against the ability for someone to start a business and succeed because he's mandating that they increase their employee costs through Obamacare and a whole host of other things along the lines of regulation and that would involve environmental and otherwise. It's also a lot more difficult to get the loans. That said, we go now to President Obama on how we do it and he's going to implement it, and he's going to say, hey, get out of the way. I'm going to do it. I'll work with you, but if you don't agree with me, get out of the way. Roll it. I'll lay out my ideas for how we build on the cornerstones of what it means to be middle class in America and what it takes to work your way into the middle class in America. Job security with good wages and durable industries, a good education, a home to call your own, affordable health care when you get sick, a secure retirement even if you're not rich, reducing poverty, reducing inequality, growing opportunity. That's what we need. That's what we need. Grow opportunity. That's what we need. Now, he's selling this in the sense of, hey, I'm going to provide this. Now, we have to ignore the last five years of his policies to believe it. But what he's counting on, what he's counting on is a big ad campaign that bolsters support for his signature legislation, and that is Obamacare. Say, Crane, it's very difficult. It is very difficult to have Obamacare get a sell job when we learn, and even the president has recognized, that the employer mandate is causing people to lose their jobs and moved it back on the implementation because it was doing just that. It was causing employers to go below 50 workers and 30 hours. We've become a part-time nation. Now, how on earth is he going to sell it? He's going to pick specific markets to go, and he's going to get Hollywood involved, and he's going to attempt to sell the benefits of it. But I think America's waking up to the fact that this is not a free lunch. Nevertheless, where will this come to a head? It will come to a head in the debt ceiling debate and discussion on raising the debt ceiling. And Rand Paul addressed that issue and specifically Mike Lee's, Representative Lee's idea of shutting down the government if it comes to that in order to defund Obamacare. Roll it. 
Uh, frankly, probably not. Uh, I do, and I will stand with Mike Lee saying that Obamacare shouldn't be funded and that we should force the Democrats in the Senate and the president to come forward and tell us why it's such a great plan. Because why are they delaying it? Why are they giving special waivers to their friends? Why have some corporations gotten waivers and other corporations not? Why are some businesses going to get exemptions and then some individuals not? I think they really need, if they're, if they're going to cherry pick and select out for some, they need to re-explain this to the American people. Now, Rand Paul is addressing last night on Hannity. He's saying, look, will, you, will the party use its power to shut down government? And he's saying, probably not. And you know why? Because not enough Americans are up to speed on what Obamacare is. But they are becoming more informed, and that's why we're even seeing, as polls show, that it has never been, in the sense of popular, it hasn't been popular with the American people. Between 53 and 57 percent of Americans have opposed it. At low point, I think that was 51 percent. But as Carol platt Bow from townhall.com referenced most recently, we are seeing a decline in the support from people that have classified themselves as Democrats. And why does this matter? Because, and we're, we're speaking to the fact that among conservative and moderate Democrats, as they've classified themselves, quote, the support has dropped dramatically, 74% when the law was passed, to a measly 46% right now. Now, people are looking at government shutdown, and you say it, and Republicans just scatter. They're just like, ah, I can't, oh, whoa, no, we can't do that because we'll lose, we'll lose, lose. This is where the Republican Party needs to make a decision. Is it going to listen to its opposition? And, and I would just say conservatives. Let's just take the R out of it. This is where conservatives need to make a decision, the conservative movement. Are we going to listen to the opposition on how best to implement our policies? Or, or are we going to go around the mainstream media, go directly to the American people through the likes of talk radio, but also through the use of the mainstream media, not accepting the false narrative that is consistently put out. Maybe take some communication lessons from Newt Gingrich. I don't know. Actually, I do know. There's a way to go about it. Nonetheless, I would like the latter rather than the former, and I think it is a fight conservatives can win. Do they have the fortitude to carry it out? And this is also a part of what I've talked about in the arena and having the courage to stand up in the arena. We'll find out. Crane Durham's Nothing But Truth. Up next, Pastor Aaron Free, AFR Talk. <laughs> 